Hello everyone, welcome to another Monday movie. I'm Mr. Blue Summers. So this week I'll be showing you how to make neon lights in 3D Studio Max. You'll find that it's a lot easier than you think. To start off, I've created a plane here, and on top of that I've got a renderable spline with some text in it. And what we're going to do is make that text glow, um, like a neon sign that you might see in Las Vegas or something. I've also created a skylight and I've turned it off so that we're not going to get any default illumination in this scene. What we're going to see is only illumination coming from the neon sign. So that's the setup, let's get started. I'm going to open my material editor and I've already applied a default gray material to the text. Instead of using the standard material type, we're going to need the mental ray material type. And under the surface and shadow shaders, we need glow loom. So I'm going to double click Glow Loom. And we're going to change the color, hopefully to something nice, blue. There we go. And the brightness of 3 is never really high enough, so I'm going to set it to 7. That's a good place to start. And if you need to, this material is robust enough to handle a sub-material, right? You can have a glowing, transparent object, like suppose you your scene has a magical jellyfish or something, then you could go in here and apply some dielectric materials as needed. But we don't need that here. So back up here in my mental ray material, I'm going to copy this down as an instance, and let's take a render and see what that looks like. All right looking pretty good. We're already getting some glow effect. Let me show you what you can do to get a little bit more light out of this, aside from of course increasing the brightness. I might turn this up to 8, we'll get a little bit more light. But since this solution is almost entirely based on Final Gather, in fact I probably should have said this up front, you must have Final Gather on or this will not work. What you can do here is increase the Final Gather precision, which will get you a little bit more light, and you can increase the diffuse bounces, which will get you significantly more illumination. Unfortunately, it'll take longer to render. Let's take a look. So we're seeing that there's more light being pushed around the scene, which is a good thing. The final gather solution is still a little bit mm, splotchy. We're getting uneven illumination, but at least we're getting some light coming off of this. As a word of caution, you shouldn't be using neon lights in order to illuminate your scene. It should just be for that really subtle edge, right? It should be a complement to an existing lighting solution. One thing that you can do that makes it look much, much cooler is use the glare shader. So I talked about this in a Monday movie a few weeks ago. I'm just going to turn on the glare shader, and let's take another render and see what that looks like. You'll notice that it's much cooler. Did you see that toward the end? That subtle pow that really brought out the glow? That's what the glare shader does. So there you go. Using the glow loom shader as part of a mental ray material, both in the surface and shadow slots, set up the parameters as you need them, and then use the glare output camera shader. And that'll get you that awesome glowing neon light look that you're looking for. Thanks for tuning in to another Monday movie. You can find all of my Monday movies as well as tutorials, resources, and downloads at my website, www.mrbluesummers.com.